So here I'm going to do a multi-part series where I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know about the BMAT, from how the test works, where you can book, to how to prepare and the kind of material that comes up. If you don't know me, my name's Dr. Hilton and I am a dual qualified doctor and dentist, so I've applied to two medical courses. I also actually teach people in my one-on-one -on -one coaching program where I've mentored many people to get into lots of BMAT universities and do a lot of BMAT teaching. So today we're gonna to start with an overview and the basics that you need to know, including dates and costs, how to register, how to prepare, what to do on test day, and then the all important results. If you want to get the full series, you can do that here. And it also starts with a three-step plan for how you should revise to get a really good score in the BMAT. So what is the BMAT? So the biomedical admissions test, also known as the BMAT, is a two-hour medical admissions assessment used by certain universities. It's designed to test your thinking skills, your ability to apply scientific knowledge, and your communication skills. Alongside other parts of the application process, the BMAT is used to select candidates for medicine and other health-related programs. So in an application cycle, which runs from September to August of the following year, members can only take the BMAT once and actually taking it twice will be seen as an attempt to gain unfair advantage and may result in disqualification from the application process and from UCAS. So the BMAT is often thought as the Oxbridge Medicine Selection Tool. However, there are actually nine universities in the UK that use the BMAT as a part of their selection process. Brighton and Sussex Medical School, Imperial College London, Keele University only for the Overseas for Fees applicants. Lancaster University, the University of Manchester, again mainly for international students, University College London, University of Cambridge, University of Leeds, and University of Oxford. However, the BMAT is not exclusively used by UK universities. There are also all of these universities in the EU that use the BMAT as their selection process. And as you can see, there's also quite a large list in Asia of universities that use it as well. So unlike the UCAT, the BMAT is actually something that you can often sit at your school. But have a chat to them or find your local test centre by going on the BMAT website to find the nearest one to you for how to sit it. Now, there used to be four sittings of the BMAT every year, but since COVID, they've now reduced it down to two. They use usually in February and normally around November sort of time. So what I'll do is actually take you through this year's sitting, which is an unusual one because they've brought it forward to the 18th of October. But here is typically how the registration goes. Registration usually opens about six weeks before. So this year for the 18th of October sitting, the registration opens on the 1st of September. The deadline to apply for any allowances is usually about four weeks before. So this year is the 16th of September. Then the final deadline to register is about three weeks prior to the exam so this year will be on the 30th of September. The exam is always just on one test date, so this year is going to be the 18th of October. The results are released about five to six weeks later, so again, this year will be the 25th of November. And then you have a week after that if you want to apply for any results inquiries, which basically means a remark. Now, important things to note that if you are applying to the Oxbridge Unis, so Oxford or Cambridge, you are usually restricted to only sitting the autumn sitting of it. So that usually means either the September or November November sittings if they're doing two sittings in autumn. Otherwise, later on it will probably only be a November sitting, but basically what they're saying is that you cannot sit the February or March sitting when you are applying to Oxbridge. A lot of the times I get asked what I can do if I cannot afford the test, and actually I've made an entire video here for what to do in what financial circumstances you do qualify to do the test for free and how to go about applying for that. However, for the majority of people, I'll put the prices on the screen now for what the cost is, whether you're replying from inside or outside of the EU, as well as the inquiries and appeals costs if you wanted to engage in those. If you require any access arrangement or any modified papers, you need to let the test center know as early as possible. Like I say, the deadline is about two weeks before the end of registration, so just be aware of that. So these include requirements such as the use of a laptop or a computer, extra time, separate invigilation, enlarged papers or font if you need to, or modified question paper. So if you require any of those, I've popped a link in the description below for exactly where you can apply if you need to do so. And another question that I get asked frequently is what time does the BMAT start? Well, actually that will depend on the test center and when you register, they will tell you the start time. If they haven't told you automatically, just ring them up or email them and ask and they will give you a start time for your exam. Now there are some basic details about what to expect from the exam, but for more nitty gritty of exactly what you're going to be asked about, techniques for doing well and how to perform on test day, check out this playlist here where I go through everything really methodically to give you everything you need to score highly in the BMAT. Thanks for watching and I will see you over in one of those videos.